Welcome everyone to Young at Heart, session number 115. I'm Father James DeLucio with the Polist Fathers here in our parlor on a rainy day, Friday, July 10th, 2020, to offer you some entertainment, stories, songs, nursery rhymes, nonsense, and Aesop's fables to keep us all young at heart. Today's selections are Aesop's Fables. I have three short ones, so let's get right to it. The first is entitled, The Lion and an Ass. An ass was hardy once, so hardy as to fall a mopping and a braying at a lion. The lion began at first to show his teeth and to stomach his affront. But upon second thought, well, says he, cheer on and be an ass still. Take notice only, by the way, that tis the baseness of your character that has saved your carcass. The moral, as per Aesop, it is below the dignity of a great mind to entertain contests with people that have neither quality nor courage. Beside, the folly of contending with a miserable wretch, where the very competition is a scandal, is a scandal. And now, from our commentary from the 17th century by Mr. Roger Lestrange, great Greek scholar, translator into French and English, and who has a name of a very popular children's character from a whole series of novels, which no one as yet has put a comment under this program of mine. So, think again. Which books or series of books has a character named Lestrange? What's their complete name and what series and to what series do they belong? Now, Mr. Lestrange reflects further on the lion and the ass. Scoundrels are apt to be insolent toward their superiors but it does not yet become a person of honor and wisdom to contest with mean rascals and to answer every fool in his folly. One indignity is not to be revenged by another. The very contest sets the master and the person upon the same level, and the lion was in the right not to cast away his displeasure upon an ass, where there was only reputation to be lost and none to be gotten. The very beasts of the forest will rise up in judgment against such persons. Contempt in such a case as this is the only honorable revenge. Fascinating, isn't it? Oh my goodness. In Mr. Lestrange's interpretation, he seems to use two phrases from the scriptures. Now he's writing in the 17th century, so it's very possible he had these scriptures in mind. The beasts of the forest will rise up in judgment against such men. Well, we hear that in apocalyptic literature. Jesus particularly is he's, uh, reprimanding towns and villages that reject his message. And he says the, the people of the south, the, the queen of the south, will rise up in judgment against the people of that town. Or uh, the people of Nineveh will rise up against in judgment against the people of that town that rejected his wisdom. So it's possible he's using that turn of phrase because it has a biblical inspiration, but we find that judgment will rise up in the Hebrew scriptures, in the Quran, and many, many uh, other books of religious nature. The other that was quite interesting is 
um, was it, what was it, what was it? Oh, it's to, pa to cast your pearls before swine. He kind of makes reference to that. The lion was right not to cast away his displeasure upon an ass. Okay. Now, second one. There was one of your Royston crows that lay battering upon a mussel and could not for his blood break the shell to come to the piece of fish. A carrion crow in this interim comes up and tells him that what he could not do by force, he might do by stratagem. Take this muscle up in the air, says the crow, as high as you can carry it, and then let him fall upon the rock there. His own weight, you shall see, shall break him. The Roystoner took his advice, and it succeeded accordingly. But while the one was upon wing, the other stood lurching upon the ground and flew away with the fish. The moral here, an odd one, considering the deception by this so-called friend. Charity begins at home, <laughs> they say, and most people are kind to their neighbors for their own sake. Ah, quite a cynical look at our human nature, and yet at times it can be part of our experiences. Hmm. I'm going to skip Mr. Lestrange's ed edification. I found it a bit trite. <laughs> and the last for today. Oh, another ass. An ass and a whelp. Do you know what a whelp is? Well, in this case, it's a dog, a puppy, actually, a very young puppy, or a very young dog, which is a puppy. You knew it. A gentleman had got a favorite spaniel that would be still toying and leaping upon him, licking his cheeks and playing a thousand pretty gambols, which the master was well enough pleased with all. This wanton humor succeeded so well with the puppy that an ass in the house would needs go the same gaysome way to work to curry favor for himself, too. But he was quickly given to understand with a good cudgel the difference betwixt the one playfellow and the other. The moral, people that live by example should do, should did, no. People that live by example should do well to look very narrowly into the force and authority of the president without saying or doing things at a venture, for that may become one person which would be absolutely intolerable in another under different circumstances. Wow. And Mr. Lestrange adds, under the allegory of the ass is insinuated the license of a buffoon. There's a mischief and scandal in the very sport and humor of it. There are some people who seem to have brutal minds wrapped up in human shapes. Their very caresses are rude and importune. And, with Aesop's ass here, their very compliments deserve a correction rather than an encouragement or rewards. In other words, everyone should know their place. And I say, don't presume, don't presume a level of intimacy with any man, woman, or child. Recognize that each relationship has an integrity of its own and, what's the word? And proceed delicately, delicately to really honor each person to find what is the proper balance for you in your relationship at a given time 
and situation. I don't know, I sound so erudite to myself, and perhaps it's the language here that has a little taste of Shakespeare. I think I put on an affect. I'll try to be much more down to earth next time. But meanwhile, stay safe, wear your masks, and don't presume anything. <laughs> and God bless. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye.